The 2020 BC Winter Games Wheelchair Basketball Competition was a landmark event for the sport in our province. From the viewpoint of the coaches, the sport leaders, and most importantly, the athletes, we'll see and hear the games come to life. Through their stories, we'll take you on an incredible journey featuring intense competition and the intangibles that make a difference in life and in sport. BC Winter Games are uh, about competition, about friendship, about social interaction. It's about creating an opportunity for athletes around the province to have their first games experience and meet kids that are, or athletes that are just like them. It's about a multi-sport experience, having judo and gymnastics and speed skating and all these different sports together with wheelchair basketball. It's education and opportunity for all athletes to see our sport and to have um, people in the community, whatever that is, um, come and try and love it as much as we do. So what got me involved was, it's my job, kind of, but it's more than that. It's, uh, um, about athlete development in the regions, um, it's about helping the province uh, grow the sport with juniors um, and it's a priority for BC Wheelchair Basketball Society so we try and excel on that and work through uh, the regions and promoting it and educating people on how to play and going from there. Uh, well, I had a friend that, that did it, and when I was like coming out of the hospital, I started watching it, and I thought it was like the coolest sport ever, so I wanted to get into it right away, and I've been playing it now for like seven years. Um, well, one day my mom was going in for, well, she was going in for drop-in with her, um, who, the, her co-workers, and I was dragged along and forced into a chair, did not want to do it, did not want to go, and I loved it, and I just kept on coming back. My friend Riley got me into it, but what kept me in the sport was absolutely the strategy. It was, it was really incredible how much he knew and how much he, he taught me about uh, chair placement and moving it around, and it, it really felt like you were your pieces in a puzzle, and you were all working together to solve that puzzle. It was really neat. It all started uh, when Tim Frick was uh, running one of his camps um, at the Pender School. I've, for as long as I've been there, he's always uh, run a week-long wheelchair basketball camp at Pender School for all the students there. And then there were a couple of us that wanted to play a little bit more, so we um, started training for the BC Games. And then in 2016, we uh, went to Penticton and got to play there, and that was a really awesome experience. Well, um, I live on Pender Island with Tim Frick, and he was just starting to train Katie Dandenu, and they would practice in the gym at our school every day after school. And my mom's a teacher at the school, so I would wait after school, and I'd see them practicing wheelchair basketball in the gym, and then just one day Tim invited me to play, and I've been playing ever since. Then after I'd done my two times, um, which is what they limit you to at the BC Games, otherwise it becomes sort of uh, unfair, I wanted to continue and go back to that atmosphere, because. Uh, I really enjoyed it, so I took a coaching course and got to go back and coach um, uh, with uh, Jason this time, which I really enjoyed. I started coaching because I've aged out of the, um, the level of play here at BC Games. Um, I'm a bit too old, so they, they asked me to take on a coaching uh, mentorship role, and which I really quite enjoyed. It's been something that I've been looking to do for a number of years now. I've been playing for eight years now. I started at the BC Games. I've played in three. Uh, and yeah, they've been definitely the highlights of the first few years of my play. So it's been really great. Um, they've 
given me so many opportunities over the past few years. Without them, I would be a much different person. Like, I feel like I have come out of my shell so much just from opportunities and um, events that BC Wheelchair Basketball has thrown and given me. Um, they mean to me a lot, so they've helped me through a lot of different things, like going to school, just having some like, troubles with school. They just made me feel safe enough to be myself and made us so many new friends here. And it's just that they're so good at making you be yourself and you don't have to fake anything. You can just be who you are and play the sport you love and just have a great time. I think for me it's it's all about an experience, right? It's it's about it's about learning new things and, and new skills and, and really pushing yourself and and to be able to do it in an environment where you know everybody wants you to succeed and and you know everybody's trying to teach you things. I mean, there's so much knowledge uh, floating around. It's yeah, I, I think it's about it's it's the experience and, and the environment that that you're you're in while you're here. Well, because I kind of had all of my old sports taken away because I have, my, I have something in my ankles, when I got them back, it was just, it was so awesome. Like, I love sports. And then coming here has just been amazing. Like, I also do wheelchair boxing and sit skiing as well. And, like, just coming here, though, to the BC Games has been something so big that I never saw myself doing. I think it's a great way just to bring everyone together and to play in a fun yet competitive game and it's like the community. I love how like even on the other teams they'll come and cheer for your team or like I know during games I'd clap whenever they make a foul shot. I'd like give them a high five if it was like a really nice shot on us and they were like it was an amazing and it's just everyone's so nice. Though we do get competitive we always like give high fives after and no hard feelings. BC Games for me it's a lot of fun. I coach it at uh, all different levels from club to, to the national team and it's one of my favorite events because it's really the first exposure of most of the athletes here get to sort of the, the big show. Uh, for various reasons a lot of our athletes don't get to play games uh, in their home community so Literally just the opportunity to have a jersey, have teammates, have referees and play an entire tournament is, is really exciting. That's before you even add in the factor that it's a multi-sport game, so they're getting to hang with you know, a couple thousand other athletes from 14 other sports, have an opening ceremony, have a closing ceremony, that generates a lot of extra excitement too. So again, I've coached at many different events, but because of the excitement of the athletes, this is one of my favorite ones. Just the other thing that uh, kind of makes BC Games special uh, to me individually is that um, of our, uh, you know, we have 11 coaches kind of working here and eight of them are BC Games alumni. And five are actually current uh, Canada Games athletes that I coach on Canada Games program. So I'm super proud that they've made that commitment to give back to the sport and continue to be involved in these games that they've all played at, which is super exciting. So the BC Winter Games are going to be nothing for our sport without our Let's Play kids and our Let's Play athletes. We need to recruit kids who are younger and we need to engage them and make them confident to come out and play and participate from 12 to 20 years old. And then they can give back, like the juniors who have attended Canada Games and BC Games multiple times. So the people who are in our programs that are five and six have somewhere to go and strive to compete at when they are 12 to 20. My ultimate goal would be going to the Olympics for wheelchair basketball and play for Canada. So slowly making my way up there, I'm going to nationals at the end of the year with the women's team. And I'm just going to keep playing and make that team Canada one day. I have, I have so many career paths, I have so many ideas. Um, I do think that uh, wheelchair basketball is going to help me most from getting into policing. Um, being able to, to see what's going on in the game and being able to play into it uh, really helps as a police officer um, and I'm, I'm going to carry that skill forward with me. Uh, from here, hopefully I go to Team BC and play in the Canada Games and then, I mean, I'll go from there if, I, if it works out for me, so on to the Olympics hopefully. <laughs> it being my first, you know, actual competition, I think I come away as a more confident player, 
Um, so that's huge, and, and I think that'll help me, you know, stay a little more calm on, on the court. Um, I, I would hope to, to compete for, for BC. Um, so that's that's kind of the next goal. Hopefully that works out. But yeah, I, I would go into that being being a little more confident uh, in, in myself as a player, and, and hopefully uh, do well because of that. I really enjoyed coaching at the 2020 BC Games and I'm hoping to do that again. Maybe I can take uh, another coaching course and sort of uh, improve my level of coaching, but uh, even if not, uh, I still want to go back and coach again because I had a really great time and I think my players did as well. Um, so uh, that's one of the things I hope to do. And then uh, as a player, I hope to uh, continue uh, training and uh, hopefully getting a chance to go to the uh, 2023 Games in uh, PEI, I think it is, uh, this next year. So uh, hopefully that'll happen. Um, but anyways, I, I love the sport, so I want to be involved any way I can. I see our zones growing. I see more people. I see the engagement and the energy around Vernon 2022. We have people asking and lining up to coach and volunteer and, and just give back some athletes who are aging out are willing to come back and it's so exciting and lovely and having their energy so high makes me motivated to make it even better. We have so much constructive feedback that we're gonna take into consideration to make the games better. Seeing the games, how close they are, it doesn't matter. I don't care about the outcome of the games. I just want every athlete to have the best experience as possible. And I hope that I'm providing that for people as best I can and we couldn't do it without the parents who come, the volunteers who are here, the host community. It's a lot of work and it's so worth it to see athletes make a new friend, have a good time and possibly win a medal and then continue on from here. So. The BC Games are everything for junior development for BC Wheelchair Basketball Society if they can be inclusive and um, accessible to our sport. After 15 rounds of competition, it was Zone 5 Vancouver Coastal defeating Zone 2 Thompson Okanagan in the consolation game by a 37 to 23 margin. The bronze medal matchup was a seesaw battle as Zone 7 Northwest edged Zone 3 Fraser Valley, 32-28. The highly anticipated gold medal final saw defending bronze medalist Zone 8 Caribou Northeast hang on to a narrow lead at the buzzer over 2018 gold medalist Zone 6 Vancouver Island Central Coast by a score of 30 to 25. From the Let's Play program to the Canada Games podium and beyond, the 2020 event was a showcase for the development of wheelchair basketball in British Columbia. For more information about the sport, go to www.bcwbs.ca. The hot dog is a sandwich. Absolutely. It's gotta be a sandwich. I have an entire thesis on it, actually. So it, it's, a, it's a debate. It requires a lot of talking with the thing. But basically, the definition of a sandwich is two pieces of bread with condiments in the middle. And literally everything in the world fulfills that criteria. <laughs> Definitely not a sandwich. Right? There's a bun. It's like the meat. You need flat meat for a sandwich. Right? We're a little bit more horizontal, more lengthwise for hot dogs. I would say it's in the umbrella of a sandwich, but it's considered, oh, what, what is it, a sandwich or a wrap? Is that the question? Is a hot dog a sandwich? It's the taco for sure, yeah. It's the cute rule of food. <laughs> yeah. <Stop. laughs>